Hey, what's up, fellas? I'm Alicia's female fan. Steve Alicia is here, back with the Unihertz Titan Pocket, and I've taken a little bit of time for this video. The last video was more for the people coming from a BlackBerry Classic, so they understood what they were getting into, but I wanted more time to come up with a theme for the Unihertz Titan Pocket for the rest of us, and we'll talk about that in just a moment. But all I could think of was there is a show where James May from Top Gear fame goes to Japan and they're sitting there and he's going around to different places and they go to a gentleman who makes samurai swords still today. He's been doing it for 60, 70 years. His apprentice, who he's still teaching to do it, has been apprenticing for 10 years and this thing still exists. The craftsmanship is fantastic. The swords are beautiful. But at the end of the day, aside for the art itself and the fact that it just exists... Who's it for? There aren't any samurai walking in off the street and buying them because they need them for everyday carry. This kind of falls into that same segment. It is fantastic. The build quality is phenomenal. You could just tell it's premium inside and out. They did a great job with the implementation of Android 11. But who's it for? We'll talk about it today on this edition of Steve Alicious Tech. And we're back as always. Thank you so much to all the new subscribers up over 5,050 as of the taping of this video. If you've been loving all the tech, whether it's older stuff, newer stuff, designed to look like older stuff, go ahead and give that subscribe button its hustle. It certainly means a lot to me. So the Unihertz Titan Pocket. And like I talked about in the comparison to the BlackBerry Classic, that's more who I'm reaching out to as to who's meant for this particular device or who's going to be the most comfortable transitioning from a device they're still using in the BlackBerry Classic to this. This is like, you know, if you're one of those people that was when in the South Pacific in one of the jungles, the gentleman, the Japanese gentleman who didn't surrender after the war until 1975, okay, if you're like him, you come out from the island uh, clutching your BlackBerry Bold 9900, then you hand him this device and you say, welcome to the new world and you're done. That's who this is going to appeal to the most. If you're somebody sitting there like that, like I keep going back to that story because it, it made me laugh. The gentleman who had the BlackBerry Bold 9900 and had a classic waiting in the drawer for the day when the 9900, you know, conked out on him so he could switch to the classic. And this was like in 2019 or 2020 or whatever it happened to be. So that's who this is for realistically right off the bat but outside of that if you're somebody who moved away from blackberry years ago whatever the reason happened to be you thought an iphone was interesting you lost you lost the support of blackberry when they started going out of style or they didn't quite keep up with the times or you needed more apps back in the day when the app blackberry world wasn't quite cutting it for you what happened whatever it happens to be now that there is something of this form factor back running Android 11 that could give you app support that you've been wanting and been wanting years ago with this type of physical keyboard, is this something that you would consider to move back to? And I've been switching back and forth devices because I was doing some other reviews in the meantime and going back and forth between the Z Flip 3 and the new iPhone and all the rest of it. And when I went back to this, I got to say the answer is no. And it's really nothing to do with this phone. It's not the fault of the Unihertz Titan Pocket. Not at all. This thing is so well done. And, you know, and I said it before in the initial impressions that I'll say it again here. This is the best implementation, smoothest running Android 11 I've seen on a budget device. Certainly someone, some, a device coming in, if you had the pre-order at $220 that I've ever seen. The battery life is off the charts. The build quality is solid as could be. Absolutely phenomenal. The feeling of the keyboard is the best you're going to have since BlackBerry. And maybe now until the new one, BlackBerry comes out. Who knows even though, because that's their own keyboard. So who knows? This is a, a superbly done keyboard. It's ph phenomenal to type on. It feels great to have the physical buttons to go back to. A lot of times when you're an Android and you're and you're done with something, you're out of something, it feels great to just hit that physical back button 
and go back into the menus. I love the convenient or whatever it is, the programmable key for the flashlight. That's fantastic. I love the portability of it. We took it to a wedding a couple weeks ago. I can't remember the last time that I was able to just pick up a phone like this, throw it in a bag. I literally threw it in a backpack with I don't know how many other tech devices, wires, tablets, earphones, and I didn't even bat an eye. I didn't even hesitate. It went in that bag and I was good to go. I knew it was just going to sustain. I knew you weren't going to have a problem with it because of how rugged it is and the design of it and how you used to treat the old BlackBerry devices. Throw them in a bag, throw them in a pocket. You didn't have to sweat every two minutes. Oh man, are we going to get a, am I gonna a micro scratch on here? Is the back glass going to be okay? Is the aluminum frame, is it okay? And you're like just gently petting it. No, it's, it's fine. It's fine, phone. It's fine. No, this is a phone that you could take to work. It's a phone that you can have in your pocket at all times and not have to worry about it. And it just works really well. I was finally able to get, I'll pull it up. I was finally, I'm just making sure it doesn't have anything on it. I, I was finally able to get BlackBerry hub services running. So I was able to do the inbox, which is great. You could program it to the notification LED, which is fantastic. It has a headphone jack. It has the IR blaster. It still has USB-C charging, so one of the modern conveniences. The camera is there. Listen, you're not buying this for the camera. Never were. You're buying this for the experience. And I just, it's just, it's tough to go from an eye, the bigger display. It's really the only thing that's holding me back is that bigger display and the ease of use of a big display and it's not I, listen i'm only 37 okay i do wear glasses but i don't ne necessarily have problems with my eyes other than that it's a strain sometimes to read stuff on here now i don't know if it's the optimization or whatever they happen to do but it's different than it feels like on the old classic it feels like because those were meant for the smaller screen they spread it out a little bit and they optimized the screen real estate a little bit better to give the apps and the fonts that much more space. I don't feel that here. They did a good job with optimization, but it's not quite, It's it feels a little small. And I'm sure there's accessibility and all the rest of it that you could do, but you're gonna do in a lot of pinching and zooming and stuff like that, even just to get through regular emails. It frames it well, but what, if you need to read something or whatever, you might on occasion. If you absolutely are somebody that just doesn't, you got an iPhone kicking and screaming. You were, were holding out on your Nokia 3300 or whatever the brick phone was, those little feature phones that you didn't even want to necessarily even have that much functionality in a feature phone. This might be something that's a good, no compromise solution. So you can do a lot more than you could with a KaiOS device. You could do a lot more than a feature phone with a proprietary OS on there even with no options in the store you could still have Facebook Messenger on here you could still get through Twitter it's an awful experience as I showed but you could still do it on here so if you're somebody that's just you know what I want my calls I want my text I want to be able to, to, to type on the keyboard and I just want it to be able to work and last two three days this is for you if you're somebody who adapted to the times that's not an insult okay there's nothing wrong with people who who love this device. I love this device. This device is going to be the new channel device. Everything that's done for this channel until the BlackBerry comes out is going to be done on this guy. Put the SIM back in it. I'm answering emails. There was a collaboration email today that I answered on here. I'm one of them. I love it. I love it. And I can adjust to it. But if you think about what the full retail price of this is going to be, $300 if you didn't get it on pre-order, and think about the other devices like that Moto G Stylus 5G from yesterday that you could get in that price range, you better be committing to a lifestyle with the Unihertz Pocket Titan, uh, Titan Pocket. And if you are, if you know that, then fine. But if you're going back thinking, oh, it's just nostalgia. I just want a physical keyboard again. I think you're going to be more frustrated than you're currently being led to believe in your own, in your own soul. I, I really believe that. I think that unless you were pining for this, unless it was you know, your grandparents, your grandkids or your, or your children who forced you to get an iPhone or forced you to get an Android device or something like that. And you really just didn't want to move away from something like this. This is perfect for you, right? Because you could do everything that you could, you could do on those other devices. Might take you a little longer. 
might be a bit frustrating of an experience, but you can still do it. But you can have that disconnect when you want it, where you're not doing a whole heck of a lot. But other than that, the fingerprint sensor is amazing. The keyboard, the backlight on it is great. Just when you hold it in the hand, you're really, yeah, you, you have to, st I have to stop and think like this was a $220 device. Like really running this well, it, just doing everything that you'd want it to do just in a very compact way. It's, 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 it's a lovely device and they did a great job. And just like that gentleman making the samurai sword, it does a phenomenal job. And attention to detail and the build quality and all the rest of the craftsmanship that went into this is fantastic. But ask yourself if it's honestly something you need. And for a lot, you know, enough of you, the answer is going to be yes, especially those of you watching this channel who are so beholden to the older BlackBerry devices. You're going to get great battery life. You're going to get that great typing experience. And for enough of you, that's going to be enough. But if you're somebody who moved on, to the iPhones of the world, to the Galaxy devices of the world, just hold off for a minute, just for a minute, and ask yourself, truly, is this something you want to go back to? Because it absolutely is a lifestyle choice. You're basically giving up on being reliant on social media, which is a selling point for a lot of people. But the communication definitely is going to go down a little bit, and the media consumption is definitely going to go down a little bit. If you've made it this far, like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Until next time, have that Steve-alicious day.